In the last five years, the Burundi Revenue Authority has increased government revenue from 300 to 560 billion Burundian francs. The man behind this has just rolled out wide-ranging reforms in a country that in 2008 had close to zero capacity for tax collection. Joining us on the line from Bujumbura is Kiran Holmes, the Commissioner General at the Burundi Revenue Authority. Kiran, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Now, you've got a really interesting... Uh, uh, Kieran has a very interesting title before we get into him. He's known as Africa's uh, toughest tax man and uh, we'll be fi finding out from him uh, what exactly he's done in terms of reforming the Burundian uh, tax base to ensure that that country has moved from zero collection to almost half of uh, the total government budget being made up of tax revenues. We also will be looking at uh, some of the experiences that he has from working in Rwanda. Kieran was in Rwanda for about eight years before he joined Burundi and for sure I'm sure that there are some lessons that he's picked up from his Rwandan experience that he's translated over uh, into Burundi and uh, interestingly this of course this debate or this discussion comes on the back of South Africa's own uh, mini budget which had a big focus on tax so let's move back to Kiran in Bujumbura the Commissioner General at the Burundi Revenue Authority Kiran thanks again for joining us of course uh, you have this really interesting title that has been labeled on you which is the the what is the toughest tax man in Africa how did you earn that Um, well, it's an interesting question, Aziko, but um, it was entirely by accident, I'm afraid. Um, I, I was working for the Irish Revenue, and a friend of mine saw a job in, in, in tax administration in the Pacific, and basically I applied for it and got it. And that was 29 years ago, and I've been doing this ever since. Now, I understand that uh, before you even got to Burundi, you had extensive experience uh, uh, with Rwanda. Talk us through about what lessons from your Rwandan experience did you translate into Burundi? Well, the Rwanda experience was, was a great precursor for the Burundi work. Uh, I spent eight years in Rwanda, uh, financed by uh, the Department for International Development from the UK. Um, and in that time, we increased uh, tax revenues by over 700 percent. And we did major reforms. We reduced tax rates. We broadened the tax base considerably. We introduced computer systems. And we made the systems work extremely well. Where do you start, Kieran, uh, when you, w you get into a country with uh, a, a zero base for tax collection and build that up to almost 50% of the government's budget? Where do you start and what are the pieces of the puzzle that you've got to pull together? Well, uh, that's exactly what happened in Burundi, Najipo. Uh, we came in to set up the Burundi Revenue Authority. The, the, first, the first job was literally to, to recruit staff. And we had to recruit 400 staff, but we had to do it openly and transparently, and we had to have the right gen gender, ethnic, and regional mixes. We ended up interviewing 9,000 people for those 400 jobs and giving 2,500 of them an exam and interviewing 750. So we got the mix right, and we did it. I mean, understanding that uh, the process would be different in different countries, but how long does it take uh, to, to overhaul and implement these reforms? Well, the, the way I've done it, it's taken about uh, six to eight years in each country. Um, it's what Paul Farmer calls the accompaniment approach. You go in and you work uh, hand in glove with the, with the government and, and the reformers in, in the country, and you bring all the ingredients you need. Uh, you bring your technical expertise, you bring new laws, you bring new procedures, you bring computer systems. All these take time to roll out effectively. Kira, now have, how have you had to think outside of, you, uh, of uh, relying on traditional revenue collection methods and uh, in terms of being innovative to ensure that you're able to reach all of the potential uh, uh, taxpayers in, in, in a, on a continent and in a country like Burundi where infrastructure to do these things isn't always in place? That's exactly right. And, you know, in countries like Burundi where you have uh, less than maybe 1% of the population are actually taxpayers, um, this is a major challenge. So you have to incorporate a wide range of taxes, for example, like broad-based uh, excise taxes and value-added tax, as well as just the traditional income tax. I guess one of uh, yes, the prominent... 
Sorry to jump in there, Karen, just uh, in, in light of time, I'm just thinking that one of the prominent uh, uh, challenges to tax collection uh, that we see in Africa and indeed in Burundi as well is uh, the rampant corruption that we often see in government. How do you go about reconciling uh, the, the social contract that you've got to have with the taxpayers with where the money goes? Well, we were very fortunate in Burundi to have the clear and unequivocal support of uh, President Pierre Nkurunziza, who launched uh, a zero tolerance on corruption policy from the, from the moment I arrived in the country, uh, which coincided with his inauguration. And that was the real oxygen for the reform. And, uh, uh, you know, what we find, what we find um, in these situations is that usually business people are fed up from paying bribes as well. They would much rather pay an equivalent amount in tax and get a government service uh, for that tax, as opposed to getting nothing for a bribe. And that's the e equation that we bring when we do these reforms. Generally speaking, I find that businesses like the reforms we bring, because we bring predictability and certainty to otherwise very bad situations. Very quickly, before I let you go, how important is political buy-in and having a political champion to head up such reforms? Uh, I didn't quite catch the question, but if, if you're talking about political support, it's, it's utterly important. It's the most important part of the equation. Kieran, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, of course, uh, that was uh, the toughest tax man in Africa sharing his insights as to how he's been able to reform uh, tax revenues and its collection in Burundi as well as Rwanda and what lessons this may have for other African countries.